We have our next book giveaway. This book is called Lies My Teacher Told Me by James W. Lowen. Now, have you ever wondered why history class was so boring? Oh, dear. Yeah, help me out of this class, right? God, help us get out of this boring, horrible, boring class called history, right? Well, um... Turns out history is actually exciting. Like if you know a little bit about George Washington and his atrocities against the Indians and Thomas Jefferson and sleeping with his slaves and Columbus hacking off a lot of arms and torturing people, right? Just god awful, horrible stuff, right? History is actually very illuminating if you know what real history is. Like Columbus in his own journal his own journal wrote that um, eight and nine year old girls were bringing more gold than the other means that were requiring it. And they, you know, unleashing attack dogs on Indians and it would just rip them apart, you know. But who wants to learn about that, right? That's, ugh, you know, that kind of makes me cringe. I don't like to think about that. How about, how about Helen Keller being a radical socialist? You know, you watch the movie and you see her going, Water! You know, and she's trying to figure out where the water thing is. But no one tells you that she spent the whole rest of her life after she went to college and learned to speak being a radical socialist. And what's the... What is... Why would she do that, right? Well, it turns out that Blindness and deafness and sickness in general isn't evenly distributed across the board, right? It turns out that poor people struggle a lot more with disease than rich people because rich people have better prenatal care and then during their lifetime they have better health care. And from womb to tomb, how much money you make will, det will help determine your your health for the rest of your life. Well, Helen Keller saw that that was out of whack because a bunch of rich people keep the money, social class stratification. And in Midstream by Helen Keller, she actually speaks of that. She says that she had spoken too soon on a subject that she knew little about. She knew, she learned because she was a rich kid. Helen Keller was a rich kid, right? Charles Darwin was a rich kid. That wraps into these things. T teaching on evolution. The very things that are going into people's minds about what evolution is. And that very they have these positions of power because they're the fittest, right? So what Helen Keller learned is that that, that just wasn't true. She learned that people are born into poverty, poverty. And then in poverty, they they're a lot more likely to be injured and damaged and not have a good life. So I learned a lot of these things from reading books by James W. Lowen. Laws My Teacher Told Me is one and there's another great set of an audio it's an audio disc with lectures and there's also a little book that comes with it and I would check that out if I were you as well and it's called what it's called so this one is last one. okay the, the next one is called everything you've been taught is wrong everything you've been taught is wrong from do you think columbus discovered america well who were the people who were already here what they do i mean what, there's a bad evil on this planet and it has to do with r these rich Civilized. Civilization means high culture. And if you're not high culture and wearing your tuxedo and your watch fob and eating with the right table manners and watching how you dab your lips with your napkin and when you're done eating, make sure you put your napkin in the right spot and place your silverware in the right places and make sure you hold your cup with just the right finger clasp on it, right? Well, that's why the Indians, realistically, and if you understand what I'm getting at, had to die. They were savage. They weren't civilized, right? I mean, it's just awful. You know, 
uh, a lot of people have heard about how the Africans were placed down on the bottom of ships and not fed anything for weeks as they came to America and starved and died and peed and pooped themselves in the bottom of ships. Well, a lot of people don't know that they said that, that you could actually find your way in, in a particular passageway between islands when Columbus and them had came back the second time and they were going back and forth. They said you could find your way by following the dead bodies of Indians who had been thrown overboard. And that one of the quotes of that is that, hey, the Africans died at first too. But so what they're getting at is that the Indians will die at first, but they'll, they'll get tougher and then they'll be able to make the voyage, right? And so Indians were treated the same way, chained up in the bottom of the ships, died, thrown overboard. Kingdoms. Kingdom after kingdom after kingdom in America was destroyed. Another great book in the same line, if you're interested, would be to go out and get you a copy of Bartolomeu de la Casas. Bartolome de la Casas, Destruction of the Indies. So Bartolome de la Casas, Destruction of the Indies. This book right here is lies my teacher told me. And this has been a very important book. It's, it's helped me understand the kind of gross lies and error that we live in on this world. And it's sad. It's sickening. It will make you, it'll make you, you might, you might be crying by the time you're done reading this book because it's so sad. And it has a, a lot of this book will explain to you about ethnocentricity, right? We got to make the Indians act like the white people, the rich, astute white people, and wear tuxes, and they need to become more civilized, right? And then the same thing, the same treatment they gave the black people in South Africa, if you are familiar with that, and the way that they completely wiped out and committed genocide on some of the aboriginal people over there. Genocide has, was committed against the Arawaks and the Indians that were here when Columbus got here. And people have heard of the legendary smallpox blankets and the way that they gave the Indians the smallpox blankets that people had died on. And the Indians weren't accustomed to the same diseases of the people who had lived in these civilized disgusting cities where people were exposed to filth and had been through the, bubon the bubonic plague and smallpox and all that. And then they came over here and the Indians were just decimated. The, um, if you know anything about Plymouth Rock, the reason that land was available when the pilgrims got here is because all the Indians had died from disease. They had been completely wiped out by, wh what's that word, pestilence pestilence. And so they they raped their women, they burned them and tortured them in all cruel manner of ways. And Bartolome de la Casas really covers that. I mean, if you really want to be completely disgusted by the way that the, that, that the Spaniards treated the Indians when they got here, and they came right in the height of the Roman Catholic Inquisition. So no wonder, right? The Roman... In Catholic Inquisition was in full force, the Spanish, and they came here and they said, we are here in the name of the King and in the name of the Holy Trinity. This land now belongs to us and if you don't bring us all your gold, we're going to kill you all. And that's what they did. They hacked off their arms, made them wear them around their necks. They constructed something called gridirons. And they said that they did it in the names of the apostles. And so they would make gridirons that would hold 13 people. And they would put them on these gridirons and cook them slowly as they would shriek and moan and scream at the, and for their lives, right? I mean, they're cooking them slowly so they'll stay alive. So this is the real history, guys. This is the real history, man. Come on. Wake up out of your sleep. I mean, and, and you wonder why they teach Darwinism today. Well... The reason they teach evolution, Darwin was a rich white kid, right? So what what they did is he he hated he was a rich white kid and he what they needed was excuses to do the things they do like they do today, right? In industry and what they they do in governments and what they do 
And all of these different little clubs, gentlemen's clubs, right? They're all such gentlemen. And, and people think that the rich people are the, like, illumined ones. And they're smart. And they're just have these great qualities about them, right? Well, start reading some books like this. Bar get that book, Bartholomew de la Casas, The Destruction of the Indies by Bartholomew de la Casas. Get Lies My Teacher Told Me. Richard Schinkman is also a great author. And there's another book by this same individual which really had a profound effect on me. It was called Everything You've Been Taught is Wrong. And that's a great book too. We know Columbus didn't discover America. There was already people living here. And plus they know that that Eric, I think was his name, he was a Viking, came here. And they know that and there's even possible evidence that the African, the black people got here first, and the Romans, there's possible evidence for even Romans. There's all kinds of evidence, completely 100% against the Spaniards discovering America. So, and but Eurocentricity, it's all got to be about white people, right? So... And, and in America, you see why it would be sickening to sit through history class here. Because if you're if you're a Mexican or you're an Indian or you're black, right? All you're gonna hear is about white people. White people invented shipbuilding. No, they didn't. The the, the Egyptians and the Phoenicians they were sailing around thousands of years ago. But white people invented shipbuilding, right? And no, and so I mean it's just it's it's embarrassing, it's disgusting, and it's it's sad. I mean, so we have to go to the secular religion they call school and listen to them tell us, oh, George Washington was a great man, and Thomas Jefferson never did anything wrong, and Benjamin Franklin was just a great person. And, and, you know, these guys are maniacal, wicked, underhanded, horrible people. And, and we are too. I mean, we all have struggled in our past with different things. That mistreating women or mistreating men or being unfair in business practices. But that's the point, right? Isn't that the point that Christian is, being a Christian is helping people discover the truth? Why does reality always seem so inconsistent with what people say in, out in the public arenas with what people do in the private? You know, the government can manage alcohol, tobacco, tobacco and firearms, but, but you know, what, what makes them be able to make marijuana illegal, for example? So... And, and I'm just saying that in their world of things, right? I'm not talking about Christians because Christians should really be against those things because of the, the kind of harmful addictions, the kind of harmful car crashes and just bad things that come. Children following your example. But this book right here, I... Let me know if you would like to have this um, first come, first serve, and um, I guess that's all I wanted to say for now. Thanks for watching. All right, let me know. Send me an email. Oh yeah, that, that's an important piece of information. My email, again, if you're interested, is J-E-R-E-M-I-A. H K Mills Jeremiah K Mills so J E R E M I A H K M I L L S at gmail dot com so let me know if you'd like to get that book so all right and I'll send it to you it's free. <laughs> I'm not charging for it or anything, so free book. Alright, take it easy, y'all. Bye.